Tonight is date night in our house, so I'm making creme brulee and a Prosecco cocktail. Let's start with the creme brulee. Now, a lot of people think of creme brulee as a really difficult or fancy dessert, and that is not true at all. Creme brulee is just a simple custard topped with sort of a burnt caramelized sugar. So to make the custard, all you need is some egg yolks. I'm putting four here in my bowl. A little bit of sugar. I'm using white sugar, but there are other options. And I'm using not about half of a third of a cup. <laughs> so like a sixth of a cup, as odd as that sounds, because I'm actually only making a half a batch. And then here I am simply combining the yolks and the sugar until the sugar is nice and dissolved. And then I'm gonna add in a half a teaspoon of vanilla extract and a cup of milk product. Now I'm saying milk product, it does have to be dairy milk. I don't think this will work out if you try to use almond milk or oat milk, but it can be heavy cream, it can be half and half, it can be whole milk, it can be 2% milk. I don't think I would go down to 1% milk, but really your options are pretty wide here. I used a combination of half and half and cream because that's what I had in my refrigerator. Now I stir it all together and you can see it has this foamy, these foamy bubbles and we don't want that. We want to get rid of those. And the easiest way to do that is simply pour the custard mixture through like a wire mesh. And most of those bubbles and foam will stay in the little colander while the rest of the goodness goes through. And then I divide it up in between the ramekins. Now this amount would make two, I would say big servings of creme brulee or four smaller servings. I prefer a smaller serving because creme brulee is pretty sweet and fairly rich and I don't like a huge serving of it, but you know what? You do you. And by the way, in the description box, I will put a link to my blog post on this where I will share the complete recipe and a bunch of options on how you can change this up. Now to bake the custard, you simply place the little ramekins in a baking dish and add in some hot, pretty much boiling water. You want it, I want to say like a good inch, you want it more than halfway up the ramekins, probably almost as high up in the ramekins as the custard itself, if that's an option. And then I'm baking it at 300 degrees. The time, it varies depending on how full you've filled your ramekins. So I only have mine about halfway full, so I'm gonna cook it about 45 minutes. If I'd done only two ramekins full, so they were really full, it would probably be an hour or even a little over. While the custard is cooking, I'm gonna just do up the dishes and use this moment to remind you that if you are enjoying this video, please click the like button. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. I release a new video, sometimes two, Every week I share healthy recipes, meditations, yoga, Ayurveda, herbal remedies. So click the subscribe button and never miss a video. The custard is set. So you know it's done when it's not real liquidy looking. You don't want it dried out in mine. I actually probably overcooked mine just a little bit, but they still turned out great. And then the fun part is caramelizing some sugar on top. I have my handy dandy torch, but if you don't have one of those, you can also just use the broiler on your oven. You just need to pay close attention because you will go from caramelized to burnt in a matter of seconds. So you can't take your eye off them. And then here, I'm just using white sugar. You could use terminado sugar. White sugar is just what I have on hand and it melts fine. I sprinkle a good teaspoon on top, sort of shake it around and then use my torch just to sort of melt it and caramelize it. You can tell as it turns brown that it's melting. If it turns black, you might be burning it. So, you know, back off a little bit. And there it is, 
yummy ready delicious that caramel coating is nice and crispy i'll put that back in the refrigerator while i move on to the cocktail i open up some prosecco uh, with a little bit more force than i intended to and with this cocktail, all I'm doing is taking some juice. Now, I'm making this around Valentine's Day, so I'm going for a red look here. So I have some cranberry or cran raspberry cocktail that I'm throwing in, but really any juice that you like. Think of this as sort of like a mimosa, so you can use pretty much anything and it will taste delicious. I do about a quarter of a glass with the juice and the rest Prosecco. You can change that up if you want more juice, less Prosecco, knock yourself out. And then I'm simply adding some frozen berries just to make it festive and pretty and also to help keep it cold. I have cranberries already in my freezer, so that's what I'm going to use. But raspberries, blueberries, blackberries, really you could even cut up like a piece of mango and put that in the freezer, you know, get creative. And if you wanted, you could also add a sprig of an herb. I skipped that step here, but there it is, ready to enjoy. Cheers. Thank you so much for joining me today. Take care, my friends.